Hello and welcome to my Should You Buy for the DS3622XS. That's right, we did a whole 40, 45 minute review a few days ago here and I know that's a lot to take in. So today's video is where I'm gonna compact things down tremendously to the five reasons why I think this is definitely a NAS that a lot of you are gonna be interested in and five reasons why you might wanna give it a miss. Let's crack on straight away with number one. The sheer scale of it, this device manages to be both massive and small at the same time. This is a 12 bay storage device. That's 12 storage bays all internally that allow you to install SATA drives inside one, two, three, or gradually populate it over time or fill the whole thing out. Now, obviously it is pretty massive. It's taken up, you know, nearly a third of the entire screen here that you can see here. But do bear in mind, not only is 12 bays of storage when each bay supports 18 to 20 TB is absolutely huge. But once you put this desktop into the right context, it's actually surprisingly small. So the majority of the time, if you were looking at 12 bays of storage, you'd look at a rack mount. Rack mounts are bigger than most of this screen you're looking at here. But this 12 bay desktop NAS system manages to be both hugely filled with storage and actually quite compact. To give you a little bit of perspective, that's a one bay NAS system. That's a one drive NAS system. So again, obviously it's smaller, but it's not, you know, when you look at the sheer scale of this 12 bay device, that's actually pretty competitive. Then we can look at a four bay. Look at the size of this four bay NAS system. Now, obviously there's an element of perspective there from where you guys can see on screen, but still nonetheless, that's a surprisingly small amount of storage being utilized for 12 bays versus this popular four bay NAS. Let's be honest, this is a big one compared to its predecessor, the DS3617. The fact that this new 3622 arrives with a couple of 10 gigabit ethernet ports is a big, big deal. 12 bays of storage, in, even in SATA 6 gigabit, with most of the hard drives putting out, you know, 2 to 260, 270 megs, is still not, you know, individually not a huge amount of storage. Once you raid them together in a giant raid configuration, there's an enormous amount of internal bandwidth that's got to go somewhere. Now, previous generations of the 12 base series have given people the ability to upgrade. They've not removed the upgradability in PCIe, but what they've included is two 10 gigabit ethernet ports, each one that can put out a thousand megabytes per second of bandwidth with which for you to saturate. And you can combine them to 2000 megabytes per second, all included in the base level price of that having to spend two to three to 400 nicker on an half decent two port card there. So again, the fact this system in its latest iteration has two times 10 GBE is significant. Not only because Synology doesn't really dabble in 10 GBE anywhere near as they should, but also because it's got a huge amount of throughput potential internally that is now not gonna be bottlenecked. Carrying on on that subject of upgradability, this system has two very keen and very obvious means with which to upgrade it. The first one we've talked about, that PCIe slot there. Synology have an enormous range of PCIe upgrade cards at this today. Um, one and two port 10 GBE cards that take advantage of fiber or copper. Then there are M2 SSD upgrade cards. Then there's the combination cards uh, that allow you to attach NVMe SSDs and a 10 GBE upgrade card. Some of them listed there right behind me like that one there. They allow you to upgrade this system in a number of key ways then later in 2021 they released a fiber channel card a 25 gbe there so again a two port 25 gbe card there a huge amount of bandwidth upgradability for this 12 bay box then you've got to factor in these two chunky little ports here these are hd mini sas ports that allow you to attach another 12 bays of storage either side giving you an upgradability and scalability of up to 36 drives total which is a tremendous amount of storage and again once you start dabbling with ssd cache link dabbling with mixed storage types and multiple storage volumes the necessity of both the uh, 10 gbe ports and upgrades in your network interface are going to be hugely appealing in this system's life with a five-year warranty attached to boot 
Next up, let's talk about maintenance on this device in terms of looking after it in the system's lifespan. Now, people that have taken advantage of rack mounts over the years will know that the majority of the chassis on those can be taken apart with fans removed for cleaning because they've got a lot of cooling systems internally to deal with a huge amount of storage and a huge amount of throughput running through the system. Desktop devices very rarely have that same level of maintenance because they're much more compact and they're designed around the idea that you can't really take them apart with every single part has to live in, in, live in a certain place in for reasons of efficiency, cooling, and heat dissipation. But in the 12 bay here on the 3622XS Plus, there's enormous amount of maintenance opportunities on the system. Now, I've already removed all of the screws here, but for example, we can remove the top panel to have direct access to the inside of the chassis. We can then remove the side panels, and the side panels, of course, which have got these little mesh ventilated panels there, we can go ahead and perform maintenance and cleaning on those. Again, same goes for the other side, which can also be removed. And again, you can clean and maintain those panels, remove all the dust there, make sure it's running fine. Then there's six stoppers here on the back that allow you to remove the cooling array, uh, the fans there, which are plugged in. And then from there, you can start doing your cooling and maintenance and cleaning internally. And indeed, inside, this allows you to double check that the heat sink inside and that the whole system is running as optimal and efficiently as possible. That's a huge amount of maintenance opportunity to get in that is just not present on the majority of other Synology NASs in desktop form. And finally, another thing about this device that I genuinely like just comes down to DSM-7 itself. Now, of course, this isn't a review of DSM-7. I've done a full, massive review on the software as it stands as it is. But DSM-7 on this device is just unparalleled in the form of desktop NASs from the brand, disk stations, as they're known. Now, DSM on this is pretty much unbeatable in terms of the number of users, the amount of simultaneous actions you can perform, the services that you can take advantage of, the throughput, the bandwidth, the health, the health management, Every single feature of DSM-7, bar one, that we're going to talk about in a while, is available on this system. This can do all of it. And if one of the reasons you were looking at Synology as the brand for your private server, for your home or business, and you know, DSM-7's application services that rival that of third parties in Google and Microsoft, there's a very, very, very good chance that if you're looking at that for business, that you're not going to find a better system for that because this runs every one of those applications to the very maximum of their potential and simultaneously, thanks to its architecture inside of a six core Xeon, 16 gig of DDR4 memory, an enormous amount of storage and throughput to push through both internally and externally. So again, in terms of DSM-7, this system is near enough unbeatable in desktop form. However, it's not always good. There's always going to be things about any purchase that aren't going to be right for everyone. So these are the five things about this box that may put you off or keep you on the fence or at least make you think a little bit longer. First and foremost, that drive support and compatibility. For those that aren't aware, this system, like a number of XS and enterprise level systems, only allows you to take advantage of Synology Drive Media. So that is Synology hard drives, the HAT5300 and the SAT5200. Hard drives and SSDs there supported on this system. So if you go to the compatibility list from this brand, you can't use your WD Red, you can't use Seagate Ironworks, you can't use your Toshibas. You can only utilize Synology branded drives. These are originally Toshiba MG series drives, so they are enterprise led. They are designed for high-end service. Again, they are enterprise quality. It has to be said, um, 550 terabytes workload per year, huge amount of cash, 7,200 RPM internally, and great performance there. But they are only available currently in three different capacities there, 8, 12, and 16 TB. And again, a lot of you are just not in love with being locked to a certain drive type and you want to have that element of flexibility so again if you didn't like that in some of the other more recent excess and enterprise level releases that is not a trend that stops on this system next up do you remember earlier i said it ran all of dsm bar one little service there that is synology hybrid raid shr this excess system like pretty much all Synology XS systems does not support Synology Hybrid RAID. For those that aren't aware, you've got your traditional RAID, your RAID 1, your RAID 5, your RAID 6, your RAID 10, where you have a bunch of drives all combined together to give you an increased performance, increased single combined capacity, and often, and in almost all cases, to give you a sense of redundancy, a safety net in case 
one drive dies and the rest of the drives still have your data in a degraded state for you to introduce a new drive and rebuild and get all of your data lovely and fast and safe. Now, um, traditional RAID levels do not let you mix drives. So if you had this system, all 12 bays, um, you had 11 of those bays filled with 10 TB drives and you put one, 10, uh, one TB drive in there, all of them will be seen as one TB drive. Traditional um, uh, RAID configurations will see every single drive as the smallest capacity drive. SHR is popular on Synology systems because it allows you to mix and match drives. No one's going to do that on day one. On day one, you're always going to have the same drives, be it fully populated or partially populated. But years down the line, as bigger capacities arrive, as drive types become more affordable, as the bigger capacities arrive, a number of you may introduce larger drives like you to make more capacity available or just to get better bang for your buck. If you do that on SHR systems, like some of the NAS we looked at earlier, you can take advantage of the extra storage that is not available on this NAS. No SHR service available. Now, why is that on there? Well, we spoke to Synology last year, and they were telling us that because SHR doesn't give you the true throughput and performance of traditional RAID, there's a dip of between 5 to 10%, depending on the storage media you use. They decided that for enterprise level systems, that you're only going to want to use uh, traditional RAID to get the full bandwidth performance. It would have been nice if they'd included at least the option. And if you have an existing SHR equipped system and you're migrating over to this, you can still hold on to that as well as use your old drives as well, by the way. But again, that only works in the case of migration. And in every other respect, this system does not support SHR, which is a real bummer for some of us. Another thing about this system that I think a lot of you are less impressed than you hoped you would be is that in the near four to five years since this system uh, has arrived, since its predecessor, the DS3617XS, the CPU jump has been... It's all right. It's not fantastic. The previous generation unit had a quad core 2.2 gigahertz Intel Xeon D1527. Now that CPU arrived in 2015. Now you know, 2015, that system arrived in 2000, you know, 15, it arrived in 2016, 17, so it wasn't a massive change then. And that quad core CPU that could be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz was still very, very powerful. It was over, it had the eight threads. It was a good CPU with a decent level of cache and throughput. Fast forward four to five years to this release, people were hoping for quite a significant jump and particularly a CPU that at least matched the architecture there that had a CPU that was maybe a year and a half to two years older um, than the system itself. Unfortunately, the 3622XS does have a good CPU, but it's not a massive hit jump. It's pretty much the same family. Also released in 2015, it is the Xeon D1531, a six core 2.2 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz. It's a um, 12 thread. And to be perfectly honest, it's a good CPU but it's not a massive jump over the predecessor given the large amount of time difference between them. I know a number of you, although there is increased cache on that CPU, there's the extra two cores on that CPU, it's probably gonna be a better overall multitasking experience. It's still not a great jump, and I think a number of you that were hoping to see a giant leap over the predecessor in that 10GBE are gonna come away disappointed. There's still the 10GBE ports on this system, but given that CPU is still architecturally not a massive jump. I think a number of you might want to wait out for something a bit more powerful if you were hoping you'd see the same jump that they did with those Ryzen CPUs over the atoms that came before them in the Plus series. Next up, I mentioned this earlier on, but this system um, is great to utilize M2 SSDs for caching. However, this doesn't have M2 SSD caching bays built into it. Unlike, I would say, at least 60 to 70% of the Synology desktop solutions that have been released in the last two to three years, this system does not have M2 NVMe slots inside. To put that into perspective, Synology have been pushing this feature heavily for years. They even released their own range of M2 SSDs for that very purpose. They even released a series of M2 SSD upgrade cards, some of which, as mentioned, have got 10 GBE on board. This supports those cards, but it doesn't have that feature built in by default. This is the DS920 we saw earlier. It has those slots built in. So why, oh why, does this not have it? Now, it might be limitations of that CPU that has been pushed 
to the, the sheer scale of its PCIe lanes internally. It could be that that CPU didn't have that feature built in, in terms of modern architecture, but still nonetheless, it seems really bizarre to me that this high-end system with all the highfalutin storage and bandwidth potential doesn't have that feature already installed. And in order to take advantage of it, you're gonna to have to put in a card. Consequently, you're now losing out on that slot that could have been used for fiber channel, could have been used for more 10 GBE ports. So again, I like I've got the option of that feature, but I don't like that I've either got to utilize a combo card and spend more, or to have that feature lose out on um, external interface upgrades it completely. This last point concerns memory on this system. Now, much like all the other Synology systems, this can have its memory upgraded. And Synology do say that you have to use their own branded memory if to maintain the support from the brand. And in other words, your warranty. Now, that's not a big surprise. That's not really my big complaint here. Synology does have a lot of memory. It's a little bit more expensive than everyone else, let's be realistic. But this is ECC memory it uses. It's nice to have that in there. My complaint about memory on this system is if I get this side panel off, let's move that round there, get the correct side, is, we'll remove that. You see those two uh, slots there? Can you see how they're both empty inside there? That's because these two slots are not occupied by the memory the 16 gig this system uses. It has two eight gig sticks inside of Synology's own or Synology branded DDR4 ECC memory. Now, that sounds like a good thing, but then when you start thinking about it, if the two slots inside have got eight gig, that means that you can't upgrade them. I don't know if you guys watched the full review, and again, it was a long and at 40 to 50 minutes long. We highlighted that the memory inside the 16 gig this arrives with are in two slots that are near enough completely inaccessible. You'd have to dismantle more than 70% of this entire system into pieces just to get to them. The result is, that if you put 16 gig sticks inside these slots, which is the maximum they can adopt, this system can then be bumped up to 48 gig of DDR4 memory with their own upgrade slots. However, the CPU inside supports way more than that. It supports at least 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. So you're kind of stuck and unable to get the maximum amount of memory that that CPU can support because the two slots inside are inaccessible and occupied by eight gig sticks there. It's such a shame that this system has an, a borderline artificial cap applied to it. Now, I don't think Synology have been, you know, intentionally nobbling things here. I do not think that. I think it's just because of the layout of the board inside and just how compact this system is that it's gonna be near enough impossible to move those slots to another area on the controller board efficiently or easily, but still nonetheless, it's just a damn shame that this system has that really weird 48 gig maximum internally for its memory when the CPU can go higher and Synology has a range of 16 gig DDR4 ECC memory upgrade options. But this has been my should you buy for the DS3622XS Plus. Again, five reasons for, five reasons against. This really scratches the surface compared to the full review that's linked in the description. So if you are still interested in this box, given its price point of two and a half thousand quid or whatever it is, my recommendation is watch that video. Even if it is a bit long, we're talking a lot of money and what is that worth to you? So do watch that full review. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you have enjoyed this video. I love doing these should you buys. They're a lot snappier, a lot punchier and we get to the point a lot quicker. So I hope you enjoyed it. Click subscribe and the bell to be notified about more videos on this system such as VMs, Plex, Surveillance and more that we're gonna be testing soon. And do take advantage of the free advice section linked below on NAS Competitors. Genuinely free, manned by humans. We don't do anything to your email. What have we got to lose? Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.